talk about. I'm telling you, Action Lab Danger Zone has just had my heart this year. Between Banjax and going to the chapel, this has been bangers. And going to the chapel number three is Amongst Us, David Peppos, Gavin Guidry, and Liz Kramer, cover by Emily Pearson. That's the one I picked up. There's been three covers to choose from so far throughout this whole run. So, yes, let's... Oh, man, all of them have been amazing. It's so hard to choose. Honestly, I just picked the first one to make it easy. <laughs> uh, well, to be... No, I take that back. Uh, the guy that pulls my books gets to pick. <laughs> because it's on my pull list. So, uh, and, by the way, David Pepos, if you're not familiar or new to the podcast, you can go back and listen to a Creator Corner interview that I was lucky enough to have with him just not too long ago, earlier this year. So, go back, find that, learn all about it. We were talking right before issue number one launched, actually. So, carrying on with issue number three. This is just full of it, it's awesome sequences. <laughs> yeah, so it starts out with Granny. She's slipping one of the robbers an Ambien and the cake. You want some cake, Sonny? Oh, sure thing, Granny. You're not such a fucking raging bitch after all. No, he passes out. He's got the shotgun. Had the shotgun. Granny's got the shotgun. Meanwhile, Emily and Tom, they're planning their escape. You know, st people still haven't caught on that Emily is perfectly cool with Tom. <laughs> That's how fucking clueless her family is. Uh, but uh, Emily, yeah, they're planning their escape. They have this whole sewer thing. Look, we can make it through this way and yada, yada, yada. Can't go through the doors because at this point the doors are rigged with the bombs because of the thing that happened in issue number two. See, issue number two. Meanwhile, well, Granny Harriet, she's got that shotgun. What's happening with that shotgun? Granny goes after Tom when she sees him with Emily. Well, uh, she shoots misses because, you know, she may be a badass, but she's still an old fucking bitch. <laughs> and there's a tussle at this point because the other bad Elvises are like, oh shit, this is, you know, this is bad. So there's a tussle and Jesse... He realizes that, well, fuck, Emily's about to get shot. She's right, you know, shotgun's pointing at her. He jumps in front of the way in the nick of time because guess what? He gets shot. Uh, well, it, it looks pretty fucking dire. Everybody just assumes that he's dead because he just took the blunt of a shotgun blast to the chest. The thing is, is you don't really see any blood. You see just, like, some smoke coming off his chest. So that's my first indicator, like, he gonna be cool. <laughs> no one else gets it, though. I'm telling you, these fucking people in this family are... Mm, not the smartest, not the smartest. And that has nothing to do with the writing. I think that's that's purposely saying, look how fucking dumb these people are. <laughs> um, so, uh, Jesse, he gets dumped off in this, well, uh, kind of the, I mean, it's a chapel, so apparently there's a place where they keep coffins and stuff because there's funerals that happen here. So the coffin room... I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know what you call it. I'm not privy to funerals and whatnot, or churches at all, for that matter. There's only a couple things I know about churches. <laughs> uh, so, uh, carrying on, the family kind of comes together to stop the gang. Look, there's more of us than you, and they've got all their makeshift weapon weapons. They're not really upset with the fact that the gang still has guns. That doesn't scare them. Uh, see uh 32 seconds ago when i referred to how stupid this family is <laughs> maybe ballsy at the same time i don't know i don't know well jesse meanwhile while all that's going on you know oh we gotta save emily meanwhile emily's like bitch i'm trying to fucking get the fuck out of here i was about to leave this motherfucker at the chapel and mm, all this shit happened and Arr. so <laughs> jesse he wakes up obviously, because the thing that blocked the, the, the bullet was this notebook that he, you know, this steel case notebook, that, I don't know, where he had his vows in or something like that, I'm not sure, uh, they, they definitely explained it in the book, I just, I write it down in my notes and it escaped my mind, I was <laughs> carrying on, that stopped the bullet, he wakes up, oh shit motherfucker, what you doing with my wife, he attacks Tom, well, uh, when he attacks Tom, they go through the door. Well, remember how I said the door is rigged with bombs? You can't open the door? Well, the bomb has now started the countdown. Emily realizes this. So, 
uh, being as smart as she is, she now has the shotgun, by the way. She goes up to the steeple in the chapel. One of the things I know about churches is chirp is chirpus. Churches have steeples, and in steeples, the other thing I know about churches is bells. Are bells? <laughs> so she shoots the thingy that makes the gong thing, and it falls down. It's really big and heavy, and that forces the bomb down underground. Problem. Down underground is where the sewers are. Sewers, where they were going to go through and get out. Now, once again, they are trapped. But what they do kind of have going for them is the, the sheriffs, they're like, get the fuck out of here. You know, they said clear the zone. So they, they've kind of created a wider distance. So that could mean something in the fourth issue. I'm not sure. But the perimeter between them and the church diameter, radius, I don't radius, has been expanded. Uh, well, when Jesse walks in on Emily and Tom, says, get the fuck out of here, motherfucker, he kind of senses Emily's, yeah, yeah, mm, more feelings towards Tom kind of situation, and yeah, he's fucking, you know what, fuck it, and that's, that's the type of drama that it leaves off with, so we've got comedy to begin with, a uh, whole lot of action all throughout, and drama at the end. I don't know if there's anything this book isn't capable of delivering. This, uh, Pepos is a fucking master. The dude knows his crime. Gidrian Kramer on the art, it's beautiful. I did, uh, man, this book could be portrayed in so many artistic styles, but I think it's just as simplistic and beautiful and perfect as this has all been. Uh, it's, mm. I can't, I, I don't have enough good things to say about this series, and specifically this issue. This has been, admittedly, my favorite issue so far of the run. 